This is a story of friendship, loyalty, and violence. A story of two coming-of-age boys as they traverse the world of their differences amidst the remaining days of peace. As we continue to live in the cruel and unforgiving world, this story is the reminder of people's struggles and triumph against the violent forces of the world. Presented by Vanessa Aliones and Uzel in Australia, this is Kite Runner by Khaled Hussein. So let's start first with the author's bio note. Khaled was born in Kabul in 1965 and he left Afghanistan in 1976 when his father, a diplomat, was posted to Paris. Before the four-year assignment ended, the Soviets had invaded Afghanistan and the family sought political asylum in the United States. Mercedes learned English in public school in the Sunset and majored in biology at Santa Clara University, and he graduated from the University of California School of Medicine. He is married and is a father of two young children. Khaled grew up like Amir, his protagonist, reading and writing. Though he has taken a one-year sabbatical from medicine, he wrote The Kite Runner, his first attempt at the novel, waking at 4 every morning for 13 months to write several pages before leaving at 8 to practice medicine. So now let's proceed to his writing style. So for the first writing style is the descriptive language which he excels at painting vivid pictures of the setting of the Afghanistan. So through his descriptive language, readers can visualize the landscapes in Afghanistan, feel the intensity of the emotion experienced by the characters, and empathize with their struggle. Then the next is the narrative structure. So, Hussein employs a non-linear narrative structure in his novel, often shifting from um, different time periods and using flashback to reveal crucial events and characters' histories. So, this technique keeps the reader engaged and allows for a deeper exploration of the character's past and motivations. Then, the next writing style is the historical and cultural context. So, Sinus novel are rooted in the cultural and historical context of Afghanistan and he weaves in the country's rich history, tradition, and the societal complexities, providing readers with an intimate understanding of its people and their struggles. Then, the next is the commonality in terms of themes which are about redemption and forgiveness. So themes of redemption and forgiveness are prominent in his works and his characters often grapple with past mistakes and seek ways to make amends, emphasizing the importance of compassion and forgiveness in human relationship. Then next um, writing style is symbolism. So Sini skillfully uses symbolism to enhance the thematic depth of his stories and he uses objects, events, and recurring motives that holds deeper meaning, enriching the overall narrative. So to guide you before we proceed to the analysis, here are the characters. So first is Amir. He is the protagonist and narrator of the story. Amir is a complex character who grapples with feelings of guilt and redemption throughout the novel. He is the son of Baba, a wealthy and influential man in Kabul. Amir is a talented writer but struggles with his relationship with his father and his own insecurities. His actions as a child lead to devastating consequences of his best friend, Hassan. Next is Baba. Baba is Amir's father and a highly respected and successful businessman in Kabul. He is a strong-willed, courageous, and has a strong sense of honor and integrity. Despite his reputation, he also carries a secret that deeply affects the lives of both Amir and Hassan. Hassan is Amir's best friend and the son of Baba's loyal servant, Ali. 
Hassan is a Hazara, a minority ethnic group and faces discriminations and prejudice in Kabul. He is immensely loyal, kind-hearted, and incredibly brave. Hassan's loyalty to Umir is unwavering even in the face of betrayal. And he becomes a victim of a traumatic event that changes the course of his life and Umir's. Next character is Ali. Ali is Baba's servant and also like a father figure to Hassan. He is devoted to Baba and raises Hassan as his own son. Ali is a gentle and loyal man, but he faces societal prejudice as a Hazar. Due to a secret that surrounds Hassan's birth, Ali's relationship with Baba is strained, but he remains committed to their family despite the challenges. Next is Farid. In the latter part of the novel, Farid is a taxi driver who helps Amir navigate through the dangerous and war-torn Afghanistan after his return. So, he is initially skeptical of Amir's intentions but gradually becomes an ally and friend, showcasing a protective and resilient nature. So, for the next character, Sorab. So, Sorab is Hassan's son and Amir's nephew, whom Amir tries to rescue from Afghanistan. And Sorab is a quiet and withdrawn child who had endured significant hardships under the Taliban regime. He is deeply affected by the trauma he experienced, making it difficult for him to trust others. And Amir's relationship with Sorab becomes a crucial element in the story's um, exploration of redemption and healing. Next is Soraya. So Soraya is the daughter of an Afghan general. Soraya is a strong-willed and intelligent woman who captures Amir's heart. So basically, he is the wife of Amir. So she dreams of becoming a teacher and longs for a more modern life. Despite her past mistakes, Soraya is a supportive and loving wife of Amir. For the next character, let's have Asaf, a neighborhood bully and antagonist in the novel. Asaf is deeply prejudiced and cruel, representing the worst aspects of the Taliban regime. He is also responsible for the traumatic event involving Hassan and remains a menacing presence throughout the novel. For the next character, Rahim Khan, Baba's business partner and a father figure to Amir. Rahim Khan is kind, wise, and understanding. And he also serves as Amir's confidant and is the one who reveals the truth about Amir's past, leading him to seek redemption by returning to Afghanistan. Next character is Sonarbar. So Sonarbar is Hassan's mother who is absent for much of his childhood and she is portrayed as a beautiful but troubled woman. Later in the novel, her presence has an unexpected impact on the story. The majority of the novels was set in Kabul, which is the capital city of Afghanistan. And the story begins in the 1970s when Amir and Hassan are young boys growing up in that city. And um, Kabul is depicted as a vibrant and culturally rich city filled with bazaars, mosques, and in neighborhoods where Amir and Hassan's childhood adventures take place. So for the next um, setting, let's have Pakistan. So the city of Peshawar in Pakistan became a temporary home for Amir and Baba. And Peshawar is a city near the Afghanistan and Pakistan border and has been a haven for many Afghan refugees during the time of conflict there. And here, Amir and Baba face the challenges of adapting to life as refugees and of course, they struggle in finding stability and a sense of belonging in a foreign land. 
And in Peshawar, Amir and Baba reconnect with Rahim Khan, a close family friend who has stayed behind in Afghanistan. And Rahim Khan plays a crucial role in the narrative as he becomes a source of guidance and support for Amir, encouraging him to confront his past and seek redemption. After leaving Afghanistan, Amir and Baba settle in California as refugees, and the shift to the United States represents a stark cultural contrast and poses new challenges for Amir as he adapts to a new way of life. And the setting in America also serves as a backdrop for Amir's journey of self-discovery and redemption as he grapples with his past and seeks to find a sense of belonging and purpose. The novel setting shifts during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in the late 1970s and early 1980s, and that invasion marks a turning point in the story as it leads to significant changes in characters' lives. Also, the occupation brings violence, destruction, and upheaval to Kabul, forcing Amir and Baba to flee the country and seek refuge in America. So the events of 2001 in the novel represents a critical moment of redemption and reconciliation for Amir because this year was his return to Afghanistan, his confrontation with his past, and his efforts to rescue Sorab, which shapes his characters that allows him to confront for the betrayals of his past. And this year, 2001, serves as a significant turning point in the narrative, leading to the novel's emotional and powerful conclusion. The novel's most iconic event occurs during the winter of 1975, which is the kite fighting tournament. And that tournament becomes a metaphor for the competition and conflicts between Amir and Hassan's friendship. And the winter of 1975 serves as a catalyst for the novel's central themes of friendship, betrayal, and redemption. So the events during this time have far-reaching consequences affecting the characters' relationship, decisions, and emotional journeys. The Kite Runner by Khalid Hussini is a poignant and emotionally charged novel set against the backdrop of Afghanistan's turbulent history. The story revolves around the complex relationship between Amir, a privileged Pashtun boy, and Hassan, his loyal Hazara servant. Despite their contrasting backgrounds, they share a deep bond centered around kite flying competitions. However, the devastating consequences of a betrayal alter their lives forever. As political unrest engulfs the country, Amir seeks redemption and embarks on a journey of self-discovery, guilt, and forgiveness. The novel skillfully weaves themes of loyalty, betrayal, sacrifice, and enduring power of love making room for both heartbreak and hope. For the conflict, we decided to highlight two conflicts present in the novel that made an influence in the development of the characters. First is the man versus self. One of the most apparent conflict in the novel is Amir's conflict within himself. Many of his choices led to devastating consequences which he dealt with for years. One of the notable internal conflict that Amir faced was having to choose between saving Hassan from sexual harassment or keeping quiet to earn the approval of his father that he has been seeking for a long time. With the consequence of this decision only furthered the conflict he has with himself. However, this decision boiled down to his jealousy of his father's affection toward Hassan who seemed to make his father more proud than he ever did. Years later, it is revealed that his father kept a secret that could have changed their lives. Amir was again faced with conflict on how to deal with the information he just received. But in contrast to his decision years ago, we see his grown in a way of looking at the revelation which showed his maturity on handling conflicts within himself. Nevertheless, it is a conflict that leads to certain consequences that affects how he sees the past and his hope for the future. The man versus society. While most of the conflicts are rooted from Amir's internal struggles, it is also apparent that conflicts concerning the society has influenced the characters. 
the way Amir sees Hassan as someone below him is caused by their ethnic differences that put Hassan at a disadvantage being a Hazara. The way people viewed this difference was also embodied by Asef, who firmly believed that Amir should not befriend a Hazara servant like Hassan. In some circumstances, Amir used this as a means of justifying his negative behavior, and it was a conflict that Amir had no control over due to the fact that the society around him dictates that Hassan and other Hazaras will never be anything but a servant. However, this has become more apparent when Amir was trying to adopt Sora, whose parents did not have legal proof of their existence due to their status of being Hazara. Throughout the stories, the wars that Afghanistan had had and its continuously fighting have been mentioned. Amir's life has been greatly influenced by the Russian invasions and the rise of the Taliban. Before coming back to the place of his childhood, Amir and his wife Soraya have been active in aiding Afghans, but it did not prepare him for when he saw what Afghanistan has become. And then, he was faced with the struggle of adopting Sorab that is rooted in the ongoing wars. Despite the challenges that Amir faced, the story's resolution revolved around Amir's redemption. After his visit to Rahim Khan, there were many revelations that occurred. One of them was Hassan being his half-brother who recently got killed, and that there is a child orphaned by the cruel king to boot. As a means of redeeming himself, Amir began making up to his mistake by searching for Sorab who he had to adopt in the end. This resolution is a reflection of how Amir has grown from the little kid wanting to please his father. It was a decision different from the one his father made in an attempt to protect his honor, because unlike his father, he disregarded what other people will think except for Soraya. This is also an attempt to end the guilt he has been carrying since the day he did not protect the son, and his way of repaying the loyalty that was unconditionally given to him by his half-brother. Time spent together does not equate the friendship affection one may feel toward each other. The novel other. presents multiple um, instances where Amir and Hassan spent significant amounts of time together growing up, but the depth of their emotional connection varies greatly. For instance, when Hassan uh, faces a brutal assault, Amir chooses not to intervene, betraying their bond. The sack of betrayal exposes the underlying truth that the time they spend together does not necessarily translate into equal emotional connection or friendship affection. Um, and Amir's journey throughout the novel further emphasizes this theme. His feeling of guilt and the need for redemption after betraying Hassan highlights the realization that he failed to recognize the true value of their friendship during their time together. And he learns that the depth of friendship affection is not solely measured by shared experiences, but also by the way one treats and cares uh, for their friend. So here are some of the textual evidences that I have found in the novel that supports this theme. Hassan and I fed from the same breast. We took our first steps on the same lawn in the same yard, and under the same roof, we spoke our first words. But in none of the stories did Baba ever refer to Ali as his friend. A curious thing was I never thought of Hassan as me as friend either. But it's not my friend, I almost flirted. He's my servant. Had I really thought of that? Of course, I hadn't. I hadn't. I treated Hassan well. Just like a friend. Better even, more like a brother, but if so, then why when Baba's friend came to visit with their kids, didn't I ever include Hassan in our games? Why did I play with Hassan only when no one else was around? Then lastly, maybe Hassan was the price I had to pay, the lamp I had to slay to win Baba. A person's loyalty remains constant despite challenges and conflicts. Throughout the novel, the author presents instances where characters display loyalty to one another, even in the face of adversity and difficult circumstances. For example, Hassan's loyalty to Amir. Um, Hassan's unwavering devotion to Amir was really evident in, in the novel despite being from a lower social class and facing discrimination as a Hazara. Hassan remains forcefully loyal to Amir throughout their childhood. 
he stands up for Amir, protects him, and even takes the blame of Amir's mistakes. Even when faced with a traumatic incident that tests their bond, Hassan's loyalty remains constant. Rahim Khan is also one of the great representation of loyalty in the novel. He is also a close family friend of Amir's, and Rahim Khan remains committed to helping Amir find redemption. He seeks to make amends for the mistake of the past, demonstrating his steadfast loyalty to Amir's well-being and happiness. And another one is Ali. Ali's loyalty is also evident in his friendship with Baba. They have been friends since childhood, and Ali's unwavering loyalty to Baba is a testament to the strength of their bond. Ali's loyalty extends to Amir as well, treating him with kindness and care even though he is not his biological son. Then here is the textual evidence that supports the theme. He was already turned in the street corner, his rubber boots kicking up snow. He stopped, turned. He cupped his hands around his mouth. For you a thousand times over, he said. Then he smelled his hat and smelled and disappeared around the corner. The next time I saw him smile unabashedly like that was 20 years later in a faded Polaroid photograph. A knack of betrayal may lead to a domino effect and only further the conflict a person the may feel. The reveals that Baba is the biological father of Hassan, Amir's best friend. The revelation of the secret adds a layer of complexity to the relationship between Amir and Hassan and it creates a sense of betrayal in Amir when he discovered this truth. Then the act of betrayal sets off a series of events that deeply affect the relationship between the characters. The one strong and pure friendship between Amir and Hassan is damaged, then leading to a painful separation and a lack of closure between them. Then that betrayal also affects the relationship between Amir and his father, Baba, as Amir feels he can never live up to Baba's expectation and love. For the textual evidence, how could he have lied to me all those years? To Hassan, he had sat me on his lap when I was little, looked me straight in the eyes and said, There is only one sin, and that is theft. When you tell a lie, you still summon right to the truth. Hadn't he said those words to me? And now, fifteen years after I buried him, I was learning that Baba has been a thief, and a thief of the worst kind, because the things he had stolen had been sacred. For me, the right to know I had a brother, from Hassan, his identity, and from Ali, his honor, his no, his namus. A redemption that comes later in life is better than not trying to redeem the mistakes from the past. Amir has proven that trying to redeem oneself is possible even if it takes years. Amir is the proof that one's past should not be the basis of defining a person. Each burden he carried was able to be lifted off of him despite it being a long process. However, it is better to have him wait for years than be given another chance to redeem himself and refuse to accept it. And as a textual evidence, it was said in the book that there is a way to be good again, he said. A way to end the cycle with, with a little boy, an orphan, Hassan's son, somewhere in Kabul. From chapter 18, page 197. Religious norms may give the feeling of emancipation or constriction. The differences in religious beliefs have set a boundary between Amir and Hassan as a Shia and Sunni Muslims. Despite it not making much of a difference with how they viewed each other as friends, the society expects that they are meant for different paths in life. However, there are many instances where traditions are showcased, especially during the wedding of Amir and Soraya, where their beliefs gave them more bliss. The feeling of emancipation was also felt by Asef when he found his way to leaning toward the beliefs of Taliban's while in jail. But the same cannot be said for all people for these beliefs put them in cage, which was reflected with how Taliban's enforced their religious beliefs to Afghan people regardless of individual ideals. The following are some textual evidence of their religions influencing their relationship. I read that my people, the Pashtuns, had persecuted and oppressed the Hazaras. It said the Hazaras has tried to rise against the Pashtuns in the 19th century, but the Pashtuns had quelled them with unspeakable violence. The book said that my people had killed Hazaras, driven them from their lands, burned their homes, and sold their women. From chapter 2, page 10. 
another textual evidence is from uh, because history isn't easy to overcome, neither is religion. In the end, I was a Pashtun and he was a Hazara. I was a Sunni and he was a Shia. And nothing was ever going to change that. Nothing. From chapter 4, page 27. War only leads to a change in lifestyle that negatively affects the innocent and marginalized. The victims of war are often those who never wanted it. War achieves nothing but chaos and betrayal. This was reflected in the novel, especially when Amir visited Afghanistan years after they flew to America. The novel has vividly described what a war-torn country looks like, and it gives its readers an insight as to how life is for many people. The theme is further shown by the people Amir encountered, and it is a sad reality that those are not just a minor character in a story, but the representation of people struggling and fighting for their survival. And as for textual evidence, uh, rubble and beggars. Everywhere I looked, that was what I saw. I remembered beggars in the old days too. Baba always carried an extra handful of Afghani bills in his pocket just for them. I'd never seen him deny a peddler. Now though, they squatted at every street corner, dressed in shredded burglar rags, mud-caked hands held out for a coin. And the beggars are mostly children now, thin and grim faces, some no older than five or six. They sat in laps of their burka-clad mothers alongside daughters at busy street corners and chanted Bakesh, Bakshesh, and something else, something I hadn't noticed right away. Hardly any of them sat with an adult male. The wars had made fathers a rare commodity in Afghanistan. From chapter 20, page 265. Violence is never a great way in asserting dominance or resolving conflict. Oftentimes, violence has been used in asserting dominance, and it was manifested in the story. The story also tells us as readers that it is not effective and is not the best means in achieving an understanding. Asef has always been violent in the story, and it is own violence that led to his own downfall. Many people in history are like Asef. Some may have achieved what they wanted, but at the cost of innocent people. And for textual evidence, Asef called the guards back into the room. I want you to listen to me, he said to them. In a moment, I'm going to close the door, then he and I are going to finish an old bit of business. No matter what you hear, don't come in. Do you hear me? Don't come in. When it's all done, only one of us will walk out of this room alive, Asef said. If it's him, then he's earned his freedom and you let him pass. Do you understand? From chapter 22, pages 309 to 310.